What is up, guys? WG Slick here from the WG on Xbox YouTube channel, bringing you the third episode of the best class setup for an operator in Black Ops 4. And in this episode, we're going to be looking at Seraph. Uh, now, I actually just realized that I went a little bit out of order there, but hey, well, back on track here, going at the Seraph operator. And Seraph is probably one of the operators that had the biggest changes um, since Black Ops 3. Um, and, and the fact that her, her ability is totally different now with, with, with the whole tack deploy um, instead of the uh, you know bonus bonus score streak um, ability, which you know it, it's interesting to play around this tack deploy beacon. Uh, sometimes it's really helpful, sometimes it's not. We're gonna get into the strategy later. Um, but as for the class, uh, I didn't actually take a whole lot of inspiration as far as you know what's her play style, but I took more inspiration from the actual annihilator itself. Um, one of the pistols in this game, the Mozu, the, um, the revolver, uh, kind of resembles the Annihilator a little bit, just on you know, a little bit a little over scale. Uh, so I decided, hey, why don't we take this Mozu, make a class about that, and it kind of fits her style. Uh, the other option I thought of was the Combat Knife. If, you, if you've seen the uh, Operator gameplay, you know, for like the, the mini campaign that's in Black Ops 4, uh, Seraph's actually like a trained professional, like hand-to-hand -hand combat uh, person, and it's kind of cool to watch that, but um, I think this Mozu class is a little bit better than an all-knife class. Uh, so without further ado, well, let's get into the class. Like I mentioned, we're using the Mozu, um, and so obviously no primary, just a secondary weapon in this class. And the the attachments weren't that hard to figure out, um, but I'll start with the most crucial attachment, and that is speed loader. Now, speed loader, um, when you're using this gun without speed loader, you every time you have to reload, you're reloading each bullet, uh, you know, bullet by bullet into the into the chamber. Um, with speed loader, does it all at once, and that's by far the most important attachment when you're using this Mozu. Regardless of what class you're trying to use it for, regardless of what operator, you 100% have to have speed loader on. Uh, the the next attachment I used, which took me a while to figure out, um, was actually high caliber. And you know, I came to the conclusion of high caliber after going through the perks and other stuff, trying to figure out, okay, what well, can I use this? You know, these last couple points on, is it worth it? Um, it turned out to be high caliber actually makes a huge difference. Uh, if you could pop an, a headshot off, regardless of you know what the range is, a headshot basically drops one shot off your, your shot to kill time with the Mozu. Um, and the, there's one strategy that I've seen a couple people use so far using the scope. Uh, they use the scope to try and you know increase the range of the Mozu. Um, and if you hit a headshot using the scope, it's basically a one shot kill. But uh, forget using the scope for now. High caliber makes this gun incredibly strong. Uh, lowers that shot to kill basically by one consistently, and that's just huge. And the third and final attachment that I have on is Long Barrel 1. Um, and, and part of the thing I was playing with is the high caliber was do I also run Long Barrel 2? Uh, basically, I came to the conclusion that just Long Barrel 1 uh, helps your range just, just enough to you know make it worthwhile. Long Barrel 2 is basically a waste, whereas you know high caliber is effective at all ranges. Um, and especially the play style for this class is kind of up close. You don't need long barrel two, but long barrel one will help you at that middle range uh, where this gun might be considered a little bit weaker. Moving on to the perks, the first perk is scavenger. Again, uh, like we used in the ruin video, uh, ammo is going to be a huge issue anytime you're using just a secondary weapon. You know, secondaries aren't primaries; they're not meant to carry a lot of ammo. But scavenger, uh, big help. You know, picking up that ammo it's going to help you extend your kill streaks because you're going to find this gun is really powerful. And you know, it's able to get you on those high kill streaks if you have enough ammo. So uh, scavenger is a must. Um, there's nothing else in the perk one slot that, that's even remotely useful uh, for this class other than scavenger. Moving on to perk two, lightweight and gung ho are going to be the perks. You're going to have to use perk two greed. Uh, lightweight obviously gets you moving around the map quicker, um, and you know gung ho is just huge. Again, gung ho making that ADS time from sprint to ADS basically zero. Uh, gung-ho and lightweight for perk two and there's no perk three for this class um, not because I don't think any are useful if you wanted to run ghost you could and then drop off long barrel from your attachment slots uh, that's one decision you can make but I, I don't think ghost is that vital with this class uh, seeing as you know the UAVs you're gonna be moving anyway and if you move with lightweight you're moving quickly um, the UAVs are gonna be delayed based on you know to your current position from the time an enemy recognizes where you are uh, ghost just not that important for this class uh, and then for the gear stim shot uh, stim shot staple in the game right now uh, there's nothing else you could use comsec device uh, maybe if you're trying to get high kill streaks uh, and maybe acoustic sensor um, for one of the suggestions we're gonna make as far as play style goes 
you know, working through the enemy spawn. Acoustic sensor could be helpful as you're, you know, navigating flanks on your own. But uh, stim shot is probably going to be your best option there. And just to recap the two wild cards, we've got secondary gunfighter, in this case, not primary gunfighter, secondary gunfighter, and then perk to greed. So as far as the play style goes for Seraph, uh, using the TAC deploy strategically is crucial. Um, and basically when you're, when you're using it in an objective game mode, you're going to want to place it in the best spawn um, for your team. So what, what you're often going to find is, is that to play the objective the best in any game mode, you got to have control of the spawns. you got to be anchoring the best spawn. And to be able to do that easily without having to have somebody set up back there, because in pub lobbies, right, nobody's playing an anchor position to lock down a spawn like you would in a pro setting. If you have the tact deploy beacon there, your team, even if they're nine all the time, they're just going to be keep spawning right where you need them to be. And, and that is huge uh, so that you can you know, not worry about controlling the spawns um, yourself, but just letting a piece of equipment do it for you. And that's really beneficial. One of the other ways you can use the TAC deploy is by using it in like a revenge sense. Uh, there's a couple times in this gameplay, I, I think once on Seaside, um, where you see me throw up the beacon on B domination knowing that I'm going to get killed off of it. Um, you know, but I, I cap enough of B dom and then someone kills me off it. I revenge spawn right there and I'm able to kill them and finish the cap. Uh, so if you know you're in a position that's kind of risky, go ahead and put the, the TAC deploy beacon down there because it's basically a second life for you. Um, and you, you respawn right back there. So you can almost treat yourself as having 300 health. Um, you know, if you want to make that stretch there, but those are basically the two options for tactical use, either in a revenge sense or in a trying to anchor down a spawn without actually having to be there sense. And so the the next part to, to Seraph is her annihilator weapon, and this weapon is not easy to use. Uh, it was very hard for me to get good gameplay of using the annihilator, uh, not because the annihilator sucks, because it does annihilate people, but it has no auto aim. Uh, you have to be be pretty decent to be able to get you know good kill streaks with the annihilator. Um, I, I'd recommend using it to break, either break an objective or lock down an objective lane. Uh, there's there's no reason to you know try and make that like a like a run and gun kind of thing. Um, you got to just be you know know almost where the enemies are ahead of time so that way you can snap onto them without having to rely on auto aim in the heat of a gunfight. So that's going to do it as far as all of the strategy and the class setup goes for Seraph. Uh, just to run through one more time, we're using the Mozu Secondary Revolver with Long Barrel Speed Loader High Caliber. Our perks are Scavenger Lightweight Gung Ho and our gear is Stimshot. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for tuning in to this third episode. I hope to see you in the fourth episode where we're going to cover the Recon Operator. Again, thank you very much for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe. And as for me, that'll be all. We'll see you next time. Something's broken